Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll learn how to how to evaluate algebraic expressions, how to figure out the value of a given algebraic expressions once we are given the individual value of the variables that appear in that expressions. Evaluating, evaluating algebraic expressions. Let's get going. There are two examples in the book here on page number 33. On page number 33. There's the first example, example number one. There are two examples, as I said, on page number 33 and on top of page number 34. Listen carefully. And then, they are give, then they give you five, five sample problems on page number 35. Five sample problems on page number 35. For a grand total of seven problems. If you feel that that is not enough, if you feel that that is not enough practice, if you want to get better at this type of question, evaluating algebraic expressions, that is, there are some other videos you can watch here. There are some more videos. Just, just type in T is math, T is math, T is math, day number 48, 49, and 50. Day 48, 49, and 50, where we, done, where we did some more problems dealing with the notion of evaluating algebraic expressions. In addition to that, in the series of basic math, in the series of basic math, these are the videos here where, that you can watch. They all deal with algebraic expression, evaluating the value of algebraic expression. Basic math, day 13, 21, 28, 66, 78, 91, and finally 144. Right, let's get going. Number one, example number one. We are told that A is equal to 4. If A is equal to 4, B is equal to negative 2, and C is equal to 7, then what is the value? What is the value of this expression a times b plus c that's what it is a b plus c a b plus c means when we say a b when we say a b that means a times b it means a times b that's what it is we simply have to replace the values a we are told is 4 so it's 4 times b which is negative 2 so that takes care of that part, plus c, which we told is 7. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, plus a 7. Negative 8 and a positive 7 is going to give us a grand total of negative 1. It will give us a grand total of negative 1. I'm going to replace this marker. I don't like the way it writes anymore. All right, number 2. Problem number 2. We are on the next page now. We are no longer on page number 31. That was. Uh, we are no longer on page number 33. We are on the top of page number 34. Page 34. On page 34, problem number 2, we are told if x is equal to x is equal to 4 and y is equal to negative 2, we are being asked to find the value of the given expression here, which is negative xy times x minus y plus a y. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. xy, a negative xy times x minus y plus a y. Let's find out, shall we? Well, this negative that we see here will remain negative right here, will remain negative x we are told is 4, x we are told is 4, so that's 4 times y, which is negative 2, so it's 4 times negative 2, write it like this. Make sure you always put parentheses around a negative quantity, it's easier to see that way. And then we have x minus y. This is going to get tricky because y is a negative quantity. Because y is a negative quantity, you start out with a different kind of parenthesis, it'll be easier. We'll start out with this kind of parenthesis, x is 4, x is 4, minus, that's this minus right here, minus a y, y is negative 2, minus a negative 2, and then cross parenthesis, this is your y, plus a negative 2, 
because y is negative 2. You with me? Let's do it down, shall we? 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So this negative is, is right here that comes down. 4 times negative 2, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Put it in the parentheses one more time. And here we'll end up with 4, a minus, a minus and a minus will become positive. Positive, positive 2. Close parentheses. And then outside we have a plus a negative 2. Plus a negative 2 is just a negative 2. So this, this is what I mean. They start out with something very simple in example number 1 and then they jump. They jump to something a little bit more complicated immediately. That's not how it goes. You have to build up gradually. In order to acquire a skill, you have to build up gradually, which is what we're going to do here. Start with number 13, then 21, 28, 66, and as you go through, as you go through all of them, by the time you get to 144, you will feel quite comfortable evaluating algebraic expressions. And of course, there are three more videos here. Let's carry on. 4 plus 2 is 6. So here, again, this negative, this negative that you see here, this negative that you see here is simply going to come down. This negative times a negative, this negative times a negative now becomes positive, and then we have 8. So that's a positive 8. Put, a, put it in the parentheses one more time. And then here we have 4 plus a 2, which is a 6, minus 2. That's it. We are almost done. We are almost done. So here we have 8 times 6. 8 times 6. Now we have to do this part. 8 times 6, which is 48, minus a 2. Minus a 2. And finally the answer is 46. But you have to go step by step. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. Otherwise, you will muck it up. Muck it up. Muck it up as in muck as in M, as in Mary, not an F. Okay? Don't get excited. Let's do let's do let's do now the sample problem that are given to us, that are given to us on page number 35. We're done with all of this thing. We're done with all of this thing. We can move on to some sample problems that we see on page 35. Sample problems. There are five of them. Let's get going. Oh, yesterday, yesterday we learned this word forte. I used that word in the lecture and we never covered it. What does it mean when someone says it's not their forte or it is their forte? Forte means someone's strong point. Someone's strong point. We learned the word forte. We learned the word forte in on, on day number 48 of our vocabulary lessons, vocabulary words, day 48. We learned the word forte. Do you know the antonym of forte? Well, if you don't know the antonym of forte, and if you wish to learn it, if you want to know it, post the video, day number 48. Just type in vocabulary words, day 48. What, what I said yesterday was that spelling is not my forte. Do you understand? Spelling is not my strong point. Number one. Pro sample problem number one. We are told that x is equal to negative 2 and m is equal to negative 3. And the question is how much is xm minus 2 times m? xm minus 2 times m. Let's find out, shall we? x, x we know is negative 2, so that's negative 2 right here times m, m is negative 3, always put parentheses around, as I told you before, always put the parentheses around the negative sign, the negative quantities, it makes it easier to be able to see it, that you're dealing with a negative quantity, okay, so this part is very simple, this is negative, this is negative, negative times negative is positive, it becomes going to become positive, 2 times 3 is just 6, so that part, that part was very easy, same thing here, minus 2 times m, which is negative 3. One more time, we'll have a negative here, a negative, and a negative is positive, and 2 times 3 is 6. Oh, it looks like answer is 12. The answer is 12. Number 2. Number 2. We 
we are told that x is equal to 4 x is equal to 4 y we are told is equal to negative 3 and z we are told is equal to negative 5 as soon as you start dealing with negative quantity that's when you have to slow down because that's where you're likely to make mistake did I oh that was number 3 isn't it we, we haven't done number 2 yet that's number 3 I, I, I'll go back and pick up number 2 okay let's, let's carry on what is what is being asked is what's the, what's the value of negative x times y plus z what's the, what's the value of negative x times y plus z again notice that y is a negative quantity z is a negative quantity it's always a good idea to put the parentheses around them so that we can keep the negative separate so if you're going to put a parenthesis around it it's a good idea to start out with a bigger bracket outside you see so negative x right here negative x uh, negative x will be negative 4 so that's just negative 4 See this parenthesis, this parenthesis was not there, we introduced it. It's okay, it's perfectly fine. Parentheses are dime a dozen, you can use as many as you want. The purpose of parentheses is to make it easier on your eyes to be able to see what you're dealing with. It's, it's, these are just visual aids, they just help you see things better. The parentheses are visual aid, that's all they are. Do you understand? So, x plus y, x is, uh, sorry, y plus z, y plus z, y is negative 3, y is negative 3, plus a z, which is negative 5. There you go. Negative 3 and a negative 5 will make negative 8. We'll make negative 8, and negative 4 is what we have outside. So what we are left with is negative 4 times a negative 8, negative 4 times a negative 8. We have a negative here, we have a negative here, a negative times a negative is positive and 4 times 8 is 32. The answer is positive 32. Let's go back and pick up number 2. I skipped it inadvertently. Let's go back and pick up 32. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress just for a brief second. I'm going to digress just for a brief second. Just be patient. I want to. I'm curious as to whether or not we ever talked about this concept that comes to my mind right now. It does not. It does not. Just give me one more second. Oh, here we go. Day number seventy-one. Okay. D seventy one. Okay, watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna do them here. It's a simple thing. It's a simple thing, but a lot of the times people make mistakes when they're dealing with concept like that. Parenthesis, parenthesis, and parentheses. Parentheses is the plural of parenthesis. Parenthesis, parentheses. Analysis, analysis, and analyses. Hypothesis, hypothesis, hypotheses is the plural. Do you understand? What I said a little while ago was parentheses are dime a dozen. Use them as many as you want. Okay, they are dime a dozen. There is no shortage. I already checked. They are still making plenty of them. So use the parentheses generously if it helps you keep your numbers separate, particularly when you are dealing with negative quantities. Question number two. We are told that A is equal to 2. This is question number two. We are told that A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 3, and C is equal to positive 4. And the question is how much is 2 times A, B, C minus 3 times A, B, C. As you can see, as you can see, the way the expression is given to us, 2A, B, C minus 3A, B 
there are no parentheses. There are no parentheses. By the time we end up, by the, by the time we end up setting it all up, there is going to be plenty of them. We're going to use them generously. Any, anywhere it helps us to keep our numbers separate and easier for us to see with our eyes. We're going to use them as our visual aid. So let's get going. 2 times a, which is just 2. Again, I do not like, I do not like writing like this. I simply do not like writing like this. It's, I find it annoying. So 2 times 2, 2 times 2, you see, 2 times 2 times b, which is negative 3, times the negative 3. We're going to put a parenthesis around every quantity, times c, which is positive 4. So that's it. That, that's your 2abc. 2abc. Tell you what, I'm going to go back and rewrite this thing. 2abc minus, minus, what was it? Minus, minus 3ab. Minus 3ab. Minus 3a is 2 and b is negative 3. That's it. Let's get going. Okay? The very first thing, the very first thing we need to notice, very first thing we need to notice, very first thing we need to keep track of are our signs. Okay, let's, here we go. So this is, this is 2 times 2 times negative 3 times positive 4, 2 times 2 times negative 3 times positive 4, which is same as saying positive 2 times the positive 2 times the negative 3 times the positive 4. Positive times positive is positive, positive times negative is negative, negative times positive is negative. In other words, if we have three positive and one negative, the final answer is going to be negative. Negative how much? Let's find out, shall we? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48. One more time, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48. That's this part. What's going to happen here? Here we have a negative, negative 3, a positive 2, and a negative 3. A negative and a negative, a negative and a negative will become positive. Positive how much? Positive, let's find out. 9 times 9, 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18. There we go. And how much is negative 48 and a positive 18? Negative 48 and a positive 18 is same as, if it makes it easier for you, think of this as 48 minus 18. 48, 48 minus 18, 48 minus 8 would have been 40, therefore 48 minus 18 would be 30. Except here, is the larger number that has a negative sign. So it's going to be negative 30. There's your answer. Let's go on to number 4. Question number 4. Number 4. In question number 4 we have, we are told that k is equal to negative 5 k is equal to negative 5 and h is equal to negative 2. They are both, they are both negative quantities. So let's get going, shall we? What is the expression that is given to us? The expression that is given to us is negative k plus h plus k times h. Okay. Negative k plus h plus k times h. Very simple, very straightforward. It's just a matter of taking our times. It's just a matter of taking our times. One more time very quickly. Parenthesis, parentheses. Analysis, analyses. Hypothesis, hypotheses. Hypothesis, parentheses, analyses. Make sure you pronounce them properly if you're going to use them in plural form. Do you understand? Negative five, negative k, negative, negative k, which is negative five. There is your negative k, negative k. This is a negative sign outside here. Plus h, which is negative two. Plus k, which is negative five, times h, which is negative two. You see what we did? In the given expression, there were no parentheses. In the given expression, there were no parentheses. We introduce parentheses around every single quantity. Here's the first one, that's k plus an h plus k times h. Just makes it easier to see everything. That's all it is. Don't use multiplication sign if you can avoid that. Just put the parentheses. So here we go. So here we have 
a negative outside and a negative inside. Negative times negative is positive, so that's just positive 5. Then we have, then we have a positive and a negative. Positive and a negative is just a negative. Negative 2. So far so good. And then here we have a negative and a negative. Negative and a negative is going to make it positive. Positive how much? Let's find out. Positive 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. That's it. We are done. 5 plus 10. 5 plus 10 is 15. Minus 2. Minus 2. Just add up the positive quantity first. It makes it easier. Or you could have done 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 plus 10 is 13. I don't know why I'm making such a big fuss. 5, 15 minus 2 is 13. Let's do the next one, shall we? The very last one of the problems dealing with the notion of evaluation of algebraic expression. Number five, the very last one. In number five, we are told that a is equal to a is equal to three. B we are told is equal to negative four, and C we are told is equal to two. The question is, what's the value of the given expression? The given expression is negative, negative a minus b. Now, this parenthesis that I put there, is that mine or did, do they give it to us? Yes, they gave it to us. a minus b times a minus bc. a minus bc. Since we are already dealing, since we know that we are going to be dealing with, since we know that we are going to be dealing with negative quantity, here's a negative quantity right here. We're going to we're going to use quite a few parentheses. Negative. This negative comes down. Negative. A minus b, but b is a negative quantity. B is a negative quantity. We want to put leave it like that with the parentheses around it, which means we're going to have to start out. Which means outside instead of instead of this parenthesis, we're going to use a bigger one. We're going to change the one. It's okay. It's all right. It doesn't matter. A, A is simply 3 minus a B, which is negative 4. You see that? And then again, same thing. They give us, they give us this tiny parenthesis, the small one. We're going to use a big one outside. So A, A is 3. A is 3 minus B, which is negative 4 times times c which is 2 and notice notice that we took the time to actually put down positive even though it just says 2 we put down positive 2 because it's easier to see that negative and a positive will give us negative negative and positive will be negative and 4 times 2 is 8 so this quantity here this quantity right here is simply going to be 4 times 2 which is 8 and a negative times positive is negative so it's just going to be negative 8. This quantity is going to be negative 8. And outside we have a bigger parenthesis. This is strange. Typically we're supposed to start from here. I don't know why I had the urge to do that part first. And then here this 3 just comes down and we have negative. That part is done. Let's take care of this part. So this negative is just going to come down. This negative simply comes down and here we have 3 minus 3 minus a negative 4. A negative and a negative is positive, so it becomes 3. Negative and negative is positive, 4. We are almost done. That 3 is going to, that, that negative is going to again come down, and here 3 plus 4 is just 7. Don't forget we have a negative in front of it. And again here we have, we have a, a negative and a negative. Negative and a negative is going to become positive. So what we end up with here is 3 a negative and a negative is positive, and an 8. That's it, we're almost done. So it's negative, negative 7 times 3 plus 8, which is 11. 7 times 11 is 77, and we have 7 times 11 is 77, and we have a negative sign in front of it, so it's just going to be negative 77. It's going to be negative 77 is our answer, and the only way that we are going to get the right answer at the end after having done all this work is making sure that we pay very close attention every step of the way. They're looking, they're looking to see if you can concentrate. That's what it is. It's just a matter of concentration. If you let, if you let your concentration lapse even for a few seconds, you're done. You understand? You're done. 
You can call, you can kiss the good score goodbye. Kiss it goodbye, the good score. If your concentration laps, don't let it happen. Amen.